Uh, just reminding the audience we're not meowing yet. Um, that was a little premature, but those meows are, are in the way we encourage yeah. Well, So I, don't worry, it's not a weird thing. Right? Well, I meow all the time. I'm, oh, got, you do? I've got four cats. Oh, yeah. I'm the best meower here. Oh, really? Do you want to... Yeah, I could have a contest. Well, I didn't know it was going to start I, this I, way. I'm going to win. Do you want to <laughs> give us one of your good meows? Um, I'm a really good meow. Okay. Meow! <laughs> yes, great job. Wow, <laughs> entrepreneur and me hour. I like it. All right, so let's we'll dive into it. So you started a couple really important companies. You had um, the Fashion Profit, uh, which was also a five hundred one c three. No, that's oh, that my for okay. profit. Okay, that one that one's the for profit one, right? All right. And then you also have the um, Fashion Business, the other FBI, which is the five hundred one three c, which um, is the nonprofit. And you provide fashion industry with resources and training to turn um, a lot of these fashion entrepreneurs into a profitable company. So Correct. you actually teach them the business side of it. Right. Um, so yeah, so first off, let's just give a big hand to Francis Harder. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Let's get on. Yeah, no one no me yes, That's good. I think you beat them wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, so anyway, so you, uh, let's talk about the story. That'd be a good icebreaker. So you put a bunch of girls in um, underwear, and then you really tricked a lot of people into giving you money. I did. Yeah. We're well, so in tell the me town. How this of, went uh, down. Yeah. They do that all the time here. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, we needed money for the nonprofit, and it was very difficult to get anybody to listen to it. So I said, okay, we'll put a show on, put a very, very good fashion show on. We got Brazilian girls in Brazilian bikinis, not underwear bikinis. All right. That is all right. I changed it in my mind or whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. And uh, we <laughs> hired some beautiful fur coats and got, and I told the girls, those guys at the end of the runway are your target. Okay. So off they went, and boy, oh boy, you know, it certainly yeah. went. We, we, we came up quite well after that. Okay, so, so these were investors that you got, and what did they end up, how did, how did it kind of catalyze the rest of the... Well, what it did was invest in building out a whole center downtown, so it enabled us to really get off feet off the ground. Mm, gotcha. So we had a training center where we had computer lab. The whole premise was on entrepreneurial training. My background is design, and I realized after having a company a couple of times and being screwed a couple of times that maybe uh, it's not just all about design, that right, you, know, right. you, you really have to know what can go wrong. And it's, there are so many other things that can go wrong besides having a wonderful line. You just have to be able to find the money, and you have to have the right people involved. And it's timing, as you probably know, with anything to do with entrepreneur, but the apparel industry is so multifaceted. It's not right. just about inventing the widget. You've got so many things going on, and one thing goes wrong, and then, right, and then you're screwed. Right, triggers all the other ones. Yeah. Okay, so, so, you were, so you actually kind of fought all these things in your own, and you thought to yourself, like, gosh, this is ridiculous. Like, there should be a resource out there. And right. then you took the entrepreneurial step to create it. So tell me about what you created. Well, after being also in education for many years, I was a professor at Otis College of Art and Design and at FIDM for many years and in England. And I realized that the colleges were not providing the entrepreneurial training. Mm. They were giving them wonderful design skills, but they weren't giving them the skills they needed. And, you know, I hope there's no teachers in the audience. But any teachers? Any teachers? Uh-oh. Uh, 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 <laughs> so there, yeah. So I realized <laughs> that. Let's still, still, still say what we wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> right. So I, I decided that we needed to teach people business skills. So, okay. you know, instead of teaching them to be great designers, they need to be great designers, but they needed to know how to have a balance sheet and where the money's coming from. You can't just do it, you know, right. pull it out of the hat with no money, you know, bad yeah. credit as well. So it kind of grew from that, and I wrote the book while I was teaching at Otis and yeah. Fashion for Profit. And then somehow I met somebody who wanted to start an incubator, and it grew from there. So we've been now 1999, it was, and we've wow, been in business. Yeah. So we're not only doing entrepreneurial training, we do displaced workers training, which is very rewarding. A lot of people who lose jobs, we are able to retrain them, especially on software that they, if they don't have those skills, they're not going to make it. Right. So we can retrain people. And then entrepreneurial training, displaced workers, and also incumbent workers training. So um, <laughs> tell me about this book. And um, what I'd like to actually hear is, like, is there a story in particular that comes to your mind when you think about all the people that have kind of gone through the system? Is there kind of one person that sort of embodies the best of what they can get out of this book? Well, I think we've had some great stories. I mean, not necessarily from the book, but through contact and maybe with the book. One of them was Stop Staring. I don't know if you've heard of that line. It's really a retro line. She started off when, about the same time I started the FBI, 
and she's grown it really grassroots, not really borrowing any money. Very, very popular, very successful, produces only in America, oh, and nice, a retro yeah. light sells in Japan and Germany. I mean, it's really good. Uh, and you all probably all know the Nasty Girl, who's oh, an, yeah. amazing, uh, an amazing merchandiser and successful story. Um, we've, we've had, you know, not that Nasty Girl necessarily is my product, but... Right, but, you, but there's an element of your fingerprint yeah. inside that so, story, right? Yeah, Where you're kind of helping people understand how to... Not just be creative, but be creative in a way that's sustainable in the long term. A lot kind of, of it company. is people successful people. It has to be understanding how to work hard. As you know, it's not just going to happen mm. on eight hours a day. Is, is that the one? Like, if there's one big takeaway, is that the one? Like, just get ready for a lot of hard work, like a lot uh, of just grinding through it. I, I and well, networking. I would say is key. Okay. Yeah, everything that I've been fortunate enough to have success with is being about people I've met mm. and the people who you've met or meet is going to be another journey and opening up another door right I mean I come to magic do been doing seminars here for magic for the last 15 years and every time I come we have a packed room and there's going to be people in there that connect to you right and whether you know I actually got a great contract with the United United Nations working with women in Peru and just got an invitation to go and work with women in Nepal and working with Kashmir products. It's all just only, from, yeah, just from networking. Kind only of networking, people. right. Okay, right. so yeah, so we, we call it collisions around here, but we're kind of, this city's kind of got a lot of that at its core too. So tell me about your experience in Las Vegas. Like, what have you thought about the community you've met here and any kind of uh, collisions or networking opportunities you had in this city? I think it's very exciting what you've got yeah. going on. Yeah. I was invited through being at Magic to Stitch City and here I am tonight. So that was networking and oh, I went gotcha. and saw what they were doing down there and I also worked with some of the teachers that were involved and um, Kevin who's, who works mm -hmm. there as well. Right. And I think it's fantastic. Okay. I just think it's very exciting that you have a city here that supports entrepreneurship. Right. LA right. doesn't unfortunately but you know I think what you've got going is, is an amazing network and, an, and great, a great energy. Right. Well, and these, uh, but I mean, are a lot of these resources online? I mean, I know you have a building, but like, um, is this stuff that uh, fashion, do they need to be fashion specific to take advantage of these resources and are they available? Well, we have, well, I have my nonprofit website and we do webinars all the time and they're available to anyone around the world. Um, we do them probably about two or three times a week. And then my own, um, my for profit site, you know, usually is, I'm still. We're working with networking to grow that, but there's so many things going so on. Crazy. It's hard. Yeah. So, so your your brain like can just change, right? Like you're in non-profit mode, and then you're in profit mode, yeah. and then like I try to make it profit mode the whole okay. time, but it's not easy. <laughs> okay, good. In fact, you're right. That's probably why it's the non-profit that'll work. Yeah. yeah. It's ADD. So good. Yeah. Just keep the one mentality around. Okay. Right. So, um, so the last question. I want to talk about this amazing event you had at Union Station, and you're going to be having again this year. Right. Um, tell, explain what Union Station is and what this event is like. Well, if anyone's so been to Los Angeles, to it, yeah. I mean, Union Station is just this amazing um, architecture. I'm from Manchester in England, so when I go oh, yeah, there, yeah. I'm like, this is mind-boggling because it's so Hollywood and you, it's a retro building that's being kept beautifully. So we do a big show there. And the last two years, we've probably had a thousand people. We've had the fire marshal in closing it oh, up. Yeah. and. It, it was an amazing event. To me, it was like standing back and looking at it and going, is this real? It was just sort of surreal. Right. And, and so what was the event for? And, um, Fundraiser for right. our nonprofit. Okay. So we have celebrity. Actually, Zappos was involved in the one ah. last, not last year, the year before. We had Marissa Liv Rivers, who was a, a celebrity MC, mm -hmm. and she had a line that she was doing for Zappos. So we highlighted that. So it was, it, you know, we have usually highlight about 12 different designers and some of them get an award. Moss Adams Award, and then we give it an Emerging Designers Award, um, and actually it's and, exciting. Okay, and then uh, so so basically anybody can contact you. Anybody interested, let us know. I don't know. We might might have someone. Who knows? But yeah. um, I actually have just a tiny little bit more time, so I'm going to throw in one more question. But we had a um, conversation about what the technology looks like for sort of um, buying things online. I thought that might be something kind of interesting because it's just this seems like this constant pain point, like I buy stuff and just don't know if it fits, it's a pain in the butt to mail it. Like, what do you think is going to happen with that and what should anybody who's an entrepreneur sort of be aware of? Well, I think it's very exciting. In fact, in our center we have a body scanner um, where you can get a whole, a whole digital avatar of you. So you go in and they'll scan you. 
So you've got now a scanned body of you that you can then take on a, say, a, a keychain, plug it into your computer, you can try things on, you can see whether it fits, whether mm. it's going to be changed. Or what's happening with retailers, you take that into a store, plug it into their computer, and they'll tell you what needs to be changed. Oh, say you gotcha. find a jacket yeah. that you like, but or in my, my particular situation, it would be a pair of pants that needs to have five inches cut off the bottom, oh. right? So, so you know, they would then Great. be able to do all that, and then it would be shipped to you. Yeah. So they could digitally change and mass customize it to you. That's, that's where it's going to go. So you'll go in a store, find one style you like, and then it will be customized to you, and then we'll ship it to you. Gotcha. So for entrepreneurs, any, anywhere along the line, they can provide value, whether it's in like trying things on digitally or, yeah, I guess sending like hems and things like that off could be all opportunities for new entrepreneurs to then go through this program and then eventually build a company, right? Yeah, well, what we offer is that they can come in and get the fit model scanned, and then they can do, instead of hiring poor models, I'm sorry, you're going to be out of a job, oh. but then you can then digitize the body and you can do a virtual fit on them. So yeah. you, you can see how it's going to be fitted and it's hmm. very exciting. Yeah, because whenever I see those guys like with all the muscles and they're like showing up new clothes, I'm like, it's not how I'll look in it, you know? <laughs> no, right. Sad. Okay, well, that sounds really cool. So let's throw out a few URLs here. Um, fashionbizinc.org is where they can check it out. Um, and then fashionprofit. For Fashionforprofit.com. Fashionforprofit.com. Okay, and then um, anything else you want to, like any other calls to action? Basically, you can probably buy this book on Amazon, I'm guessing. You have other places right, that you recommend the, they go for it? And that's the 10th edition, and um, I've just about had a nervous breakdown over that one. But oh. uh, <laughs> no, we've got 32 tenth, different yeah, people. Yeah, well, 10 editions yeah. up would give me a nervous breakdown, yeah, well, too. That's a I whole had to redo it with yeah, yeah. Get industry people who, we've got 32 different people who put their input into it. So yeah. it was uh, good. Like, yeah, herding okay. cattle. Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll get some people um, through this because I think it sounds like a great, uh, great opportunity for them to learn how to be business people. So, Thank um, you. should we hear how good the audience can meow? Yeah, I think that would be a great move right now. <laughs> meow, 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 that was great. Yeah, All right, you. thank you very much. I appreciate it. There, let's take a step off you before oh, oh. you run out.